I don't know if you've looked outside lately. The world is having a time. But if there's one thing that always emerges from adversity more than hope or promise for the future, it's always hip hop. <laughs> If you've been hanging around here for a minute, you may have noticed that there are two things that I love to talk about. One, very specific metal subgenres like burger metal or porno grind. And the other is regional hip hop, whether it's emerging from ISIL or more benignly, England. Chap hop is a term invented by the man born Jim Burke to describe his dandified rapping about cricket. Straight out of sorry, a gentleman rhymer named Mr. Beef. More than any other genre, what makes hip hop so potent is the almost non existent barrier to entry. It helps if you're related to Lucius Lyon, but really all you need is your own voice and something to say about your own experience. A lot of deaf people are into hip hop. It makes sense. There's heavy bass, there's words that can be signed, and so it only makes sense that there are now rappers, numerous rappers, who can't hear much of anything. There is a humanitarian crisis of monster proportions knocking on our door as millions are forced to flee Iraq and Syria. And given everything that we know about hip hop, it makes sense that someone in that diaspora would be rapping about it. <laughs> Syrian Dream are a group of dudes with literally just a flute, as far as I can tell, living in Egypt. Originally from Damascus, they fled Syria three years ago. And what is so touching about watching them in interviews is how in the same breath they will express a desire to tour the world professionally and also to return home to Syria for all Syrians to have an opportunity to return home. Another Syrian refugee rapper has found his way into Western Facebook feeds lately. The slightly more polished Murder Eyes. Recently profiled by Vice magazine, and originally the name for an entire crew, Murder Eyes wears the crown of Syria's first rapper. Showing up on the scene in the early 90s, he owned his own studio, his own record label, his own clothing store, all of which he was forced to abandon when he fled the Syrian civil war in 2012. He now lives in Germany along with a steadily growing number of Syrian refugees and has dedicated himself to his own Syrian hip hop unity movement. It's an important ideal and one with some precedence in the world of refugee rap. Wiyaha Kasub is a Somali collective formed in Kenya, a group of refugees spanning religious and ethnic regions that grew to become one of the most popular hip hop acts in East Africa. <laughs> Wiyaha Kasub, whose music often speaks out against Islamic extremism, were forced to uproot themselves again in 2014, when their refugee status in Kenya was revoked and they're currently seeking asylum in the Netherlands. So as much as the news cycle is currently focused on refugee stories from that kind of part of the world, there is just as interesting and vital refugee rap coming from the opposite side of the planet. Would you believe that that guy used to live under the thumb of an oppressive communist regime? In those furs? Yeah. <laughs> Kang Chung Hyuk defected from North Korea as a teenager. And today he uses his platform as an artist to speak out against the government that he was forced to flee. Hip hop is a song that 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 is a song
정말 자유롭게 내뱉을 수 있는 정말 좋은 도구인 것 같다라는 생각을 했어요. My point exactly, or the point I was trying to make at the beginning of this video. Hip hop is the dominant sound of American popular culture, and therefore it has an audience of young people all over the world. But in addition to that, it is accessible, and it doesn't have to be subtle. So if you have something important to say, hip hop is the perfect way to find an audience and to say it. And if someone has something to say about something as unique and vital and important as fleeing violence in their homeland, we should probably listen. What do you think? Is hip hop a unique form of expression in the way that we're talking about it right now? We actually have, I think, a perfect sponsor for this episode, and it's a new app called WeMesh. We can't always be in the same place as our friends and family. I have close friends I only see once a year because they live somewhere dumb like Houston or the suburbs. And what WeMesh does is lets you watch YouTube videos in perfect sync with those people while chatting and talking over voice over IP. The sync is so precise that you could literally do karaoke with your friends in Dubai and Vancouver. And I love what apps like this are doing to shrink the world and let us share more experiences with the people that we don't get to see all the time. So you and your friends could have a session where you just watch all of the This Exists episodes and talk about how good and smart I am. There's a link in the description to check out WeMesh for Android and iOS, so go check it out and let me know what you think. Subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week, and be excellent to each other.